wonderful time with your families. I am looking for my second and my third graders. You guys are one of my favorite groups because we're really getting into this rocking and rolling and getting our stuff done. Uh, on our website, Mrs. Vaughn has put up some instructions. I was hoping that you could find an animal that you like or a person that you love. And I want you to zoom in, be a camera, zoom in on their eyeball. I want you to draw a really detailed contour line drawing of some sort of eyeball of an animal or a person. Think about their eyebrow, if they have feathers or scales, is it a dragon eye? I'm not sure what you want, but Miss Vaughn put up a, a handout on the website that you can look at for some suggestive of animals. And then you can also do your own research and find the animals or the people that you would like to focus on. So Mrs. Vaughn has already started this part. I went ahead and I drew my owl eye really big. And um, I just used Sharpie to kind of get the basics done. And I'm hoping that you can do that as well. If you haven't done that yet, Take the time to do that. Press pause or put this video away for a little bit and you get started on that because that is part one of the assignment. This one I'm about to show you is part two and this is when I think we all need a little support because although we've done stuff like this similar before, we're stepping up the notch and we're going into learning new things about color. So the first thing I want you to look at is your eyeball. And um, we need to divide it up into 12 sections. So we're not gonna get super math about it. I hope not. You know, Miss Vaughn, I'm not great with numbers, but I'm gonna do my best with you. So I first want you to find the center of your eyeball, wherever that may be. Put a line there for me or a dot there. And that's really important because when you put that dot in the middle of the eyeball, all of your lines are going to intersect and cut through that dot, and it's going to help you make sure that you have the 12 slices around your color wheel. Almost like a cheesecake. Hmm. Has anyone ever had a cheesecake where each slice was pre-cut and you just have to pick it up with the little pieces of paper and eat them? Those are kind of my favorite. Anyways, for those of you who don't have a Ruler, I'm using a book. I don't have a ruler for some reason in my house that I can find. So um, you need just something that is hard and has a straight edge. So um, this is a cardboard book I found um, that I can use. I'm first going to divide my eye into four sections. Um, think about our plus sign. We're gonna have a vertical line and we're gonna have a horizontal line going through that dot. All right, there is my four sections. Now, this is where I have to get math-like. <sighs> what times four equals 12? Does two work? Let me see, two, four, six, eight. No, that's not enough. Oh, three. Three, six, nine, 12, that's perfect. So we're actually going to um, make that fourth that we created into three smaller sections. And um, let me show you something that the fourth and fifth graders are working on. They're doing something super similar. They're doing a mandala color wheel, but they had to divide up their spaces the same way as you did. So uh, we are going, obviously our eye is not a perfect circle. There's parts of my circle that should be over here that we're not looking at. So um, Mrs. Vaughn is going to, with my pencil, kind of draw the missing links to my circle. I'm gonna start down at the bottom and we're gonna divide this bottom um, quarter into three different sections. And I'm gonna make a mark 
where I think those sections should be. They need to be somewhat even and they have to start at this edge, go through the center and hit the outer edge of your eye. So let's take a book. Make sure it touches mark one and mark two. Drag your pencil across and stop when you hit the edge of your eye. You're gonna do that for the next part as well. Hey, now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and I have two giant sections. So I'm gonna do that exact same thing now on these, this side. Remember, I've got to cut through the middle and the edge where I marked, which is kind of looking on the outside of the circle and deciding where that intersection is going to be. So looking closely at my eyeball, you're going to notice that I have 12 sections. And the first thing I'm going to do is tell you a secret. We always start with red. And so I want you to find where you want your red to be. Mrs. Vaughn has kind of trained herself to put red at the top, so I'm gonna to continue to do that. But you can put your red wherever you want your red to go. So my red is gonna go here. There we go. And then I need you to jump three spaces. One, two, and three. This is gonna be my next primary color, yellow. want you to jump three more spaces. One, two, three. And my last primary color that we're gonna talk about is blue. Now, you're gonna get the opportunity to go in here and paint those sections to look something like this. And I hope that um, whether you use paint, you can use color pencils or markers, whatever you prefer to make your primary colors look as bold and strong as you want them to be. I think Ms. Vaughn is going to use a combination of markers and a watercolor today. So I'm going to actually color my primary colors first. And my last but certainly not least, blue. Blue skies smiling at me. Nothing but blue skies do I see. Now that you have all three of your primary colors, it should look something like so. And think about mixing your primary colors. If I mix red and I mix blue, that's gonna make a purple. So um, I have three spots in here. We're gonna start creating a pattern with our secondary colors. We're gonna go Coloring a space, skipping a space, coloring a space, skipping a space, coloring a space. So my purple's gonna go in between them. Blue and yellow make green. And then yellow and red make orange. Now that I have my primary and my secondary colors done, we're gonna learn something about tertiary colors. Tertiary colors, I don't think we've looked into second grade, so make sure you're paying really close attention. Tertiary colors is mixing a primary color with a secondary color closest to each other on the color wheel. So if I'm looking at my red, and I notice that orange is nearby, I'm actually going to mix orange and red and I'm going to create a tertiary color, which is red-orange. <clears throat> Those are the names of the colors, Miss Vaughn. Why, yes, you're using the primary and secondary color names combined to create the names of the tertiary colors. So I'm going to have a red-purple, I'm going to have a blue-purple, I'm going to have a blue-green, 
I'm going to have a yellow green. I'm also going to create a yellow orange. Now, someone may be asking Miss Vaughn, why do the primary colors come first? Well, primary colors are gonna come first when we're talking about tertiary colors. And then that secondary color is that second color we're mixing in to create that tertiary color. So why don't you watch Mrs. Vaughn? I'm gonna be using watercolors for this part and I'm gonna work kind of fast, but you should be able to catch on and see that I'm using the colors next to that empty space to create that new color. Take a look and see. colors done for the most part. I've got two more left to create the tertiary colors of my color wheel. All right guys, so Mrs. Vaughn has colored in her color wheel. I've got my primary, my secondary, and my tertiary colors done. I am going to let it dry and then I think I'm going to go back and kind of touch up some of the black contour lines. You could leave your animal completely black and white, which is some of the examples above. However, if you wanna color them in like your animal to make it realistic, you're more than welcome to. We are going to be using this color wheel later on um, when we start digging into our next assignment. So use it as a tool when you're done. Hang it up in your um, at-home classroom whether that's next to your bed or hanging up by the refrigerator, because um, we will come back to this to use information uh, for color relationships in our next assignments. I hope you enjoyed this. It's something simple. It's something that can help your day go by. Um, I have some videos linked down below with color mixing to help you guys out if this um, didn't answer all of your questions. And know that you can always contact me uh, through email or um, some of the other social media sites. Um, I look forward to seeing pictures of your wonderful masterpieces and enjoy your night. Bye guys! <laughs>